Hello everyone, uh, today I will be guiding you through the process of um, how to make this effect in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. Okay, and inside uh, in Unreal, so we will create just a new project. And this project, it must be of a third person and of um, blueprint type. Let's say plus plus this time and we'll give it a name and you set it in uh, which location you, you would like and we'll hit create and once the project is loaded we'll jump straight to the third person folder reprint folder and bb third person okay so what are we are going to what we are going to do is we'll create and uh, create a sphere um, first, I'd like to uh, introduce you to the, um, what what uh, what what is I mean the, the attraction force. So the idea behind my 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 pro my, my effect it was just um, that there is a, an attraction force that is applied to each and every cube in um, in my character here. So there is something is called I mean. Uh, sampled locations on the character and those cubes they are attracted to those locations so for, first um, I need to demonstrate what is attraction force so here I have my skeletal mesh and I will add a sphere I don't want it to be attached to the skeletal mesh but the, the root of the, the actor and I will scale the sphere, give it possible scale in order to be to, to in order to inter interact with the character. And we jump into the event graph. I will use the event take. I think the third person, so it, it will not be there. So I need to search for it. Event take. I will take sphere, and it should simulate physics, and. Um, is because if you just play the game, see it's attached to the character because uh, both the skeletal mesh and the sphere they are um, child of the capsule component. So I'll take this the sphere and similar physics and play again. See now we can interact with the sphere. So take sphere skeletal mesh. Control, if not for button to drag, and here we will calculate the unit um, vector. Get unit direction from the sphere. Um, yeah, first we need to get world location for both the skeletal mesh and the sphere in the world. So it will be from the sphere to the mesh very order nodes and here it will return just the unit direction I will just write string to debug it and read the value and if we hit play you see that the x at the, the top left corner of the screen it's minus uh, 0.998 and if I move the character around you see the values they are changing and if I am in the opposite direction or the another uh, side, you see it returns positive. I am here, so it's minus. Okay. And uh, we need this. So after we get the unit unit direction, we need to multiply multiply this by um, a float value uh, that is so great that it can move or uh, then we'll um, add it to a um, add force function. That it will apply the force. So I will multiply and we'll convert this into a double precision multivariable. And this one it will be the force. And we'll add force to the sphere because it will be the one it will follow the, the, the character. Add force like this. And here, axle to velocity. And uh, I will compile here. Give it a greater value. And now when I play 
you see the sphere uh, tries I mean, to stay with the character but you know you see it, it's a little bit crazy so we need to add um, linear damping set linear damping in order to settle the uh, the motion so if it's one But there is um, a better, better uh, implementation. So we can say that if the sphere um, it is within a certain range, we will apply the uh, we don't um, apply the force, but we will apply um, linear damping and vice versa. So I will calculate the distance from the sphere to the mesh, and it will return upload value. And I will say if this check if it's below uh, for example 150 and okay and if it's true if it's below this I will set linear damping it would be five and if it is not at force and still just uh, can like this and set the linear jumping also so here I will try just try to jump to hide from the sphere and it will look or search for the for the character but earlier to attract the character Okay, that's it. Um, now, what we need is to jump to the next part and hear what I'm going to do. I have the character mesh here, the skeletal mesh. I need to sample, I mean, uh, certain locations on the, the character. Imagine they are just kind of partic particles, and those part each particle it has its own location. And for example, there are five, okay? And I have five cubes, and each cube it will be attracted to this point. Okay, so before we jump to this part, I, I need to explain or to implement uh, how how about if if I have so many spheres in my uh, in my level, and those spheres they will be attracted or follow the the character. Uh, first of all, I need to create kind of volume um, that is kind of box. Is box box collision and well, I think the capsule component. Scale it here. And I will use this as a container for uh, to I mean to give me so many locations inside this, and I will use them those locations to spawn. Those actors. So now we'll use the event begin play. I will take box and I will take um, get actor actor location. No, um, the box get get world location get world location and. Random, random point in bounding box. Okay, so I need also um, box extent for this. Um, get box extent, link it to here, and uh, this time I will use for loop. And the for loop uh, module, it will just uh, loop through a um, certain amount of, I mean, a number of times. And each time it will, this uh, this function, it will create a new location. So, for example, I need uh, 15 boxes. I will just uh, uh, define here as 15. And I 
will get this location and will spawn um, spawn static um, spawn actor from class and this class this time it will be different it's not it's not an, an, uh, it's a component but rather it will be a separate separate uh, separate actor so of a, of a kind is uh, static mesh actor because you know static mesh actor uh, for example if uh, I drag any kind of I mean uh, basic shape like a cube this one you know it's a static mesh static mesh actor and this static mesh actor you can specify the static mesh here it, it has a component it is called static mesh and we can um, specify any kind of um, mesh would like to replace here so if it, it's a kind of static mesh actor and here I will create just promote a, to a variable and this variable will be spawned actors and they will change just the type to an array it's okay, we'll delete this. It will add this this actor when once it's spawned, it will be added to this container to the array. Use it later. Okay, and we'll need to specify the transform. Make transform. And we will we need to link it connected to the location. Now once we provide no error and here we had the static mesh actor then we will specify the static mesh our git static mesh component because I said it's a component set static mesh and here for example we say we will use the sphere but what sphere? Okay, the sphere. Okay. And the same um, or the component we need to set simulate physics. So no need for this sphere. We don't need this sphere anymore. Okay. Well, after we added those, so we need to check if the spawn it will spawn correctly. The plane, see those spheres, they are spawned, but they are not. Yes, see, they are static. So we need to change the mobility of each each actor. So here, if we just make um change set. Mobility, not for the sphere, but for the component. Here we'll make it just mobile, and we play again. See, now we have a bunch of spheres, but but the, those spheres they are uh, very 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 big. Okay, but before we simulate or do anything, we need. It to make it movable because it uh, complains. See, no error now. Okay, sweet. Um, but now we need to make the, the sphere a little bit um, uh, smaller. Set scale. Set scale. Set world scale or set relative scale 3D. Okay, here we will make bigger. No, maybe we can just um, okay, bigger. No need for this, so I will just specify manually Play again. The spheres they are smaller. Okay, and we now we need to set, to set the material material for this one. Set material. What kind of material? 
Okay, so it will be just orange. Nice. We will build the logic again. So here you come again. We specified how many times this bunch of code it will execute. So they are 16 times because zero it's one. If the, here it's zero, it will execute once. 15 it means 16 times. We spawned static mesh actor. We added to an array, and we will we will use this array here. We'll get it. And now for for each loop, because we know um, now it will read the elements, and it will return single actor here. And we'll use it here for so we will use the same logic here but we'll replace the sphere the sphere here it is a kind of static mesh component okay object and here it will return the same static mesh actor it's not a static mesh be careful please so i will connect it to here and and connect but I need to arrange them. You see here. I'm trying to do this. Well, they are <laughs> thinking far away. Okay, we need just to <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot to replace this one. I okay, will replace this here. And again. Whoa. They are chasing me. Okay. See? This is the whole idea. Nice and sweet. But it's not the. Uh, you know, because um, the location they are trying to to follow is the static mesh um, mesh roots here. Um, see, it's this location. But now we'll jump into the um, um, the Negra module and we'll see how we can sample certain locations on the character. We jump to the project, uh, uh, the content browser. And we have the we'll create a new folder, name it like FX, and we'll create a new system, Negra system. New system, and we'll pick the front end template, um, add it, finish. We'll rename it Negra system sampler. I will name it like this. Double click, it will open. So, here how it will look like with the fountain template but i will get rid of so many of those i don't need those i need this and this i don't need spawn rate okay now um, what we need to do is to get the module that is called um, Initialize mesh reproduction sprite. And we need another module. That this one it will just um sample, but here I will specify the specify the skeletal mesh. I will search for this for the skeletal mesh and I will get here. And we have in um, emitter spawn um, in um, emitter update. Sorry, first now uh, it creates those locations for us, but those they will not stick to the moving character so we need to add update mesh reproduction sprites and we'll feed the same 
same skeletal mesh and for the spawning and let it be only once no loop and now they are dying because they kill particles we don't want to kill any particle okay nice and sweet we get back to our character here i will add nagra particle system components and let's do the roots we'll pick the sampler as you can see here the, the locations are sticked on the character so for example here if i go to the spawn person and we increase like 500 particles they will be there okay uh, nice and sweet okay how we can just export those data um, because they are inside the Niagara system how we expose this to into blueprint and we can use a module a specific module that is um, responsible of exporting uh, particle data to blueprint you can use it here export particle data to blueprint and there is uh, just you can follow me uh, with my uh, settings we will take this this it will um, read the condition for when it will um, export the data and we need to add the callback handler because now it will export vector Victor extract, velocity, and the size of the particles. Okay. And now we will use uh, we will add we need to add the the callback handler, and it's a kind of ob, uh, of object type. So we go to user parameters. We'll add search for object, and we will name it BP. Uh, BP on back okay and i will copy this name we'll use it later okay we'll go to the export particle data callback handle parameter bb callback and now it's exported okay how then we can import into our blueprint we can import our data into the blueprint just using the blueprint interface uh, but first we need to um, call our object that we set in uh, the export particle data here, the callback. So we'll uh, just drag our Negra system and we search for set variable. Okay, and we'll give it a name. Just uh, we'll use the event deck here. Let's connect for the moment. And it's a kind of its user. Okay, it will just can rename this and copy the name um, user. Not our name or whatever you named it. And here we need to get reference to self. Okay, so the data is imported here and how we can use this data. Um, after this, we need to go to class settings and implement the interfaces, we'll add search for callback and there will be a new interface of C particle data we will choose um, implement event and this will be uh, uh, triggered uh, every every tick just like an event tick and it will return or give us the data array of the basic particle data structure and here we can just get the first element the time being and we'll break this and it will return position and i need to debug this and we'll search for debug sphere in order to test and demonstrate if it's working so specify color like red and right now everything should work let me just okay see now yeah, our sphere is changing here yeah, because we have um, need to lower the number of particles here. Let's say we need if we make just uh, make them like fifty. 
now our sphere, uh, deepak sphere, it will stick to the the particle system, to the the location that we we got from our Nigra system. Okay, so now we will um, implement um, what we have done before here, because here. When we created our actors, we got this spawned actors, uh, which, which were, um, were the, the spheres. And we'll take the whole thing here and pass it here. And what we are going to do here, we, we will replace just the... We are not interested in the mesh. Rather, we are interested in the new location. The locations on the skeletal mesh. We need to write it the back. And then we connect this to the for each loop. Okay. And I will replace this location with a new location, which is this one. And we will apply the force to the spheres. But here we are getting only the first element, but we don't want the first element only. We need each location or each cube to be attracted to um, unique ID or unique location. So how we can get this? Because here we have an array and ha here we have an array. When we run this for each loop, it will um, return uh, an index each time. And we will use this to get our unique uh, location okay so but first I need to to make the spheres just a little bit smaller Let's say and we'll try to run this they are attracted but they stop because of our um, but yes, there, there is an error that shows up because um, you need to make sure that the, the numbers here are equal to the numbers here. Because here, if we show the particle count, we have 50, um, 50 particles. But here, um, we need to change this emitter to only once. And the number, it will be always 50. And here, it must be 50 actors. So I will not um, type 50 because those there will be 51 actors. And I will, it will be just 50 minus 1, which is equal to um, 49. Okay. And 49 actors, uh, uh, 49 um, indices, and um, this is equal to um, 50 actors. So if we run this again, see, escape no error. Because we have the same count and why it is not um, following because here we specified um, here when the distance is less than 150 because it's uh, it's not only to apply damage so we will lower this um, like let's say 10 units they're starting but you know they are affecting the, the character Okay, but now we need to exclude, um, I mean, we need the, the, the static meshes only to inter interact with each, each other and to exclude the, um, the, the character itself. So um, I will set the collision, collision parameters here for, for the character. Here I will select just a custom and we will ignore world dynamics. And I will set those actors to be world dynamics. So from here, set, uh, set collision object type. And I will select world dynamics, not for the mesh, but only for our our static meshes and. Started to get him messy. Um, then I will exclude uh, set response to 
all channels it will ignore each and everything in in our world and now i will specify only the world um, dynamics set collision response to channel it will ask me which channel and it will be um, world dynamics block We'll try this now. Yes, it's working nice in speed. You see how now the, the static meshes, they are just following the, our, our character and they are not uh, crazy. So we will try when they get closer to the character, they will try to stick to th those locations. Okay, nice and sweet. So what whatever we do here, those actors, they will try best, I mean, to um, follow us, but here, uh, as you have noticed, that those actors they are not uh, interacting with the um, world. I mean, uh, static missions. So how we can? So we will add this. So it's like um, when you have um, your mesh, and you will, I mean, specify ignore everything, and you will just take what what you want. So uh, this is what what we have done here. We ignored everything, and we specified the world dynamic, and also will. Um, Specify also the world static. The world static block. Yes. So we'll check what collision is this one. <sighs> collision response. Yeah, I I missed this. So I need to connect this. See? Now we interact with Yes, nice and sweet. Okay. Now uh, I will try to increase the number of particles. The number of particles here. Let, let's make it just 250. And here we will need to specify the same number. Remember it's minus, minus one. And we'll try just to uh, lower the threshold here um, of the distance. And also the damping here to be just. Uh, three. And we will try this settings. But if we increase the damping like fifteen, okay, nice and sweet. Okay, so um, no, I think it's the it's uh, the time just to. To hide the character. And let's see how it will look. Search for hidden hidden game. And also we will for the negative system just we can go to the initialize particles and we'll zero out the color. 
No. See, there are a lot of um, settings that you can just try. We, what will happen if we decrease this uh, or increase if it's <laughs> yeah because they're sticking to that character and they will they will not leave it uh, maybe of the damping here. We lower this. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of things that you can try. So uh, now, how we can, um, I mean, make those, I mean, uh, spheres just to, to be thrown in the ground and uh, deactivate this attraction force. So we can. Go and um, set a new variable, and we'll say attract it, and it will be of a kind of pool, but it's not, it's a single single pool, and when well, it here, and um. We just uh, make this zero and we play with the dumping. So branch. And if it is attracted, so go ahead. Uh, if it's not attracted, so we'll set the force zero and the damping we will make it just a in damping also feed it to here okay also let's hit the damping the zero out of damping okay that's how we can switch this on and off um, maybe if we get keyboard, keyboard like on G, I will check if it's work. It's working. This one, yes, it's working. So when we press G, we'll check this. Um, branch if it's pressed set this if it's pressed let's check it we need also to check this okay so when you press G and if this, if it's um, already attracted, so deactivate. If it is not, activate. And here, um, yeah, forget to, because here we are zeroing uh, zero uh, everything, but we need to get the default, the default values for this one. So the force uh, is 8,000 and in damping, yeah, 
here it will be different but um i will not include this for the time being i want to control only the, only this one and this time being three okay so now if we play and we press g oh my god so uh so you you need to play just around with the settings and um because now i think the force it's very intense and but i want to go oh press g again it will reconstruct Okay, but if now, if um, if we can make just this 100, uh, 1,050, 3, and also because the the um the meshes they are uh big big a bit um in damning here if we make it just one Okay, that's it, uh, guys. Thank you for watching.